In today's video, we're taking a look at the inside of a sewing machine to see if we can figure out exactly how it actually works. Guys, today we are doing something that is inspired by the internet. Now, lots of things I do are inspired by parts of the internet. This one specifically is that I have seen multiple times in several places pop up diagrams that seem like they're trying to show how a sewing machine works, but most of the time they fall short. They don't quite explain everything that's going on, and I've seen comments where people say that answers some questions, but I still don't get how this part works. So today, hopefully, we're going to explain all of the mysterious parts of a sewing machine so that you know how it works. Um, really quick, I'm just gonna do a short little demonstration so we can look at what's happening and then we can try and explain how it's all happening. Here's the basic idea. Sewing machines are useful but complicated machines. How are they able to sew fabric together without passing a needle through to both sides? We're gonna take a look at the inside of the machine and see if we can show you just how it works. I grew up having some basic sewing knowledge. My mother is very good at sewing and she knew it could be very important and useful to have at least a little bit of ability with a sewing machine. So she did make sure I knew how to use it somewhat. Uh, I took a home ec class in middle school where we did a little bit more. And then I actually took a sewing class in college because I just wanted to get a little bit better at it. And um, I, I, I like pretty much anything that's putting things together, building. And this is just another method of construction. Now, a couple caveats. Because my bright thread is just on these small little spools, these are called bobbins. Normally, you have a larger spool of thread. This is the main thread feed. I'm actually going to be using a bobbin up here. This is not what you normally do. Like I said though, it's just because I don't want to use the tan color thread. I'm going for the brighter colors. We can go over what I'm doing as I'm threading it in a bit. This part is just a demonstration of the sewing happening. Here we have two pieces of old t-shirt. They are separated and we're going to put them together. If you're trying to sew and you want it to line up seams and you want it to stay really nice, you're gonna use pins to hold it in place. I don't care what this ends up looking like. I'm literally just trying to get it sewn together. That's all. Probably need to adjust my tension a little bit on that. That's all right. Let's take a look at what I just did. So as you can see, the pieces of cloth are now attached. Great, that's wonderful. You can see the blue thread and we had our blue thread in our spool up here. And then on the back, if you look, we have the tan thread. And that was the color in the spool down here at the bottom, the one called the bobbin. So if you take a needle and thread and you pass it through cloth, you're gonna have the same thread on both sides. You're just using one thread, you can go back and forth or you can do other patterns to make sure you know, it's a more complete stitch, a stronger stitch, but for the most part, if you're using a needle in your hand, it's just gonna go all the way through the fabric and all the way back, and it's just gonna pull the thread behind it. Sewing machines don't work like that. You can see the needle, but it's attached to the machine. It's not going through one side and turning around and coming back through. That's not how sewing machines work. So right here at the beginning, the blue thread is a little bit loose and you can kind of start to see how this actually works. The blue thread has come through and is in a few little loops and the tan thread is running through those loops. All right, you can see if I pull on the tan thread, it loosens the blue a little bit. And then on the other side, if I pull that blue thread tight, it pulls those loops down and it's now securing the tan thread in place. This is so cool. Did you know that portable sewing machines weren't invented until the 1900s? Portable ones like this make it a lot easier to move them around. Before, they were clunky pieces of metal that really couldn't go anywhere. All right, now let's take a look at how it is the sewing machine is doing all of this. We're kind of gonna start at the top and work our way down. We already looked over here at the thread, and as I said, Normally it's on a spool more like this. They come in different sizes. The main advantage of a spool like this instead of using one like this is just that it holds more thread. You don't have to change it as often. As I said though, I'm using the little spool because it's what I had with the different color on it. I just wanted to highlight the difference. It's also easier to see the blue string. So let's take a look at where this string is going. It comes off of the spool here. And to be 100% honest, I'm not sure if there's a direction that it's supposed to go. 
I think it's this way because it's supposed to come off the side, but I swear I've received conflicting information on that over time. So on this machine, I'll show you what the thread is doing. It can be different on different machines. The general goal though, is that there are a few actions that have to take place before it gets to the needle. And that's all happening up at the top. So we come over here, this little piece of metal is a hook. It runs through that and it comes down. Now on this machine, something important is happening right there. As this thread comes down next to this plate, it's getting sandwiched between this plate and another plate. On this machine, this is where the tension on the thread is controlled. The tension of the thread is important for this stitching here. You can see a little bit, if you look carefully, that there is tan thread showing through on this side with mostly blue. There's just the tiny little tan spots. And then on the other side, there's tiny little blue spots, you know, in between all of the tan lines. Ideally, those spots wouldn't be very visible. All of that would happen in the middle. You want, the two threads are pulling against each other through the cloth, and you want them perfectly pulling in the middle of the cloth that you're sewing together. If it gets pulled to one side or the other, there's a little bit more slack and play in the line, and you're not gonna have as tight and firm of a bond, and that's controlled by changing the tension. On this machine, you can control the tension digitally. On some machines, it's a physical knob that you have to turn, uh, but that just changes by squeezing on the thread. There's a spring that's controlled and it literally just pinches the thread at the right amount to make sure the tension is correct. Uh, that's gonna change based on what cloth you're sewing, how many layers you're sewing, and the thickness of your thread. Comes down under there, up to here. So this right here is a hook. I can bring the thread around it and look, now it's caught in there and this little plate on the front is gonna make it so I can't accidentally have the thread come back off. Maybe if I really tried hard, it could. But for the most part, it's not gonna go anywhere. That hook, as the sewing machine runs, is going to go up and down. And this is going to pull the thread into the right placement so that we never have too much slack in the line. So when the machine is running quickly, that's gonna be going up and down like crazy. So it comes down here, I'm gonna hook it once again into that hook there and a second hook right here in this machine. That's all of the steps before the thread goes through the needle. There we go, we have our thread running through the eye of the needle which is down at the point. This is the sewing machine needle and I talked about how the thread goes through the point rather than the back uh, like you do on a hand needle but that's not the only difference. For one thing, the back of the needle is not shaped to go through cloth, it's shaped to fit into the machine nicely. You can see it has one side that's completely flat. That lets the needle stay oriented in the right direction and it lets the machine hold on to the needle a lot tighter. This on this side is the front of the needle, this is the back of the needle. And right here is a small divot in the needle. So instead of just being a straight line from the point to this farther back spot, it comes forward and then dips down just a little bit right here before straightening out again. This will explain on the inside of the bobbin mechanism it is very important and it is part of how the thread gets wrapped around the bobbin. This is so cool. Did you know that Howe and Singer actually became the first inventing millionaires because of their patent on the sewing machines? Not a bad living. Thank you. This right here is called the presser foot. It can move up and down. You can adjust the tension on it. It's designed to hold the cloth down in place as it's being fed through. There are several different shapes of these you can get for different specialty types of stitches. This is the general idea though. Holds everything down in place and the cloth slides right under. It's very smooth on the bottom. You can see right here these sort of jagged pieces. These are called feed dogs and when the machine is running, those will actually move. So you can see it starts up front and then it moves back a little bit and then it drops down and then comes back to the front and then moves back again. So as you have the cloth in the machine, those are what control the movement of the cloth. A sewing machine will actually pull cloth through even if you're not pushing it. Like it'll, it'll do it all on its own. I can, I'll show you, I will actually take my hands off the machine and have it keep sewing. So I'm not touching it at all. Those feed dogs are what move the cloth. And if you want to change the size of the stitch, I can see I'm gonna make it really small. And now the feed dogs are only gonna move a tiny, tiny bit. Now I'm gonna turn it up to a giant stitch. So now you can see the cloth moves a lot faster every time the needle is raised, a lot farther. At its minimum, it actually really didn't like it. The cloth wasn't moving almost at all and the thread began to sort of bind together. And then when I open it up, we have much larger stitches. I feel for the most part, none of that is terribly hard to understand. You get that the thread comes from a spool 
and it does some trickery and gets it down to a needle. And then there's something that makes the cloth move. This part down here, I think, is where all of the black magic happens. So in here, we have what's called the bobbin. The bobbin is the small reel of thread that, you know, in our case is the tan thread. That was the bottom thread. And we have a lot of pieces in here and they can get a little tricky. So this part here is just called the bobbin and the bobbin is held in what's called a bobbin case. Bobbin case is right here and you can see the thread wound around the bobbin in here, our tan color. So we are now looking at the underside of the machine. I'm not using the pedal, I'm just turning everything by hand. We should be able to see some of what's happening down in there. So there you go, the needle is just barely visible up here at the top. And you can see a tiny bit of blue, hopefully. A little bit more blue will appear, there you go, as I bring the needle down. So there you go, now you can see more of the needle. It's poking down through right here. So the machine came and it grabbed the thread. If you look right here, this point, that's what grabs the thread. And it actually grabs it by going into that little notch. Do you remember the notch in the back of the needle? This little point here is what grabs the thread out of the back of the needle because of that notch. You can see the thread getting wrapped all the way around the bobbin. Look, we've got two pieces of the thread here. We have this one, which is going in front of the bobbin, and this over here actually just traveled behind the bobbin here. And you can see that this is our tan thread coming out of the bobbin and it's now been snagged by the blue thread. So as this keeps coming around, you can see uh, at the moment it's still hooked, but as this keeps going, it will unhook. And then when the machine is running and under tension, it pulls up. And at this point, the blue thread is pulling the tan thread up out the top and they will have twisted around each other. This is so cool. Did you know in 1941, the tailors actually rioted in France because the sewing machines were taking their jobs. All right, this right here is my home built inside of a sewing machine pieces. So let's see what we've got. We have our bobbin with our thread wrapped around it. We have our bobbin casing. This is simplified. I'm not putting in all of the details, but the general idea is there. The thread comes out. Bobbin casing goes in this piece and this little notch on the side here is just to keep it so the bobbin case doesn't move. So I can still pull the thread out, but the bobbin case itself stays in the same spot. And we have that notch in our little bobbin as well. On the real sewing machine, it serves a dual purpose. It stops it from rotating, but also when I pull this lever, it moves in and that is to hold the bobbin in place so it can't fall out while I'm putting it into the machine. This piece is the one we were just looking at. It doesn't come out of the machine unless you have lots of fun little tools. It does have a spindle on it that the bobbin and bobbin casing are on. So this right here, this piece that's spinning, is what the machine spins. And I pointed out in our machine, the little hook that comes and grabs the thread. That's this piece right here. So our needle would come down and it gets held about like that. And then this piece comes around and our needle would be in front with a little notch over it. And that piece snags the thread. Very clever mechanic bits down inside are going to drive this end of the thread down underneath this whole assembly as it wraps around. So you can see this thread's up here. This one gets pushed down underneath the whole bobbin. So as it spins around, it goes under, slides. And if I took this out right now, you can actually see it's starting to move underneath it. And this piece is not attached, it's just free floating. I hope this was helpful more than confusing. I know that there's a lot of little pieces in here, but I've seen enough people confused online about how a sewing machine does its thing that I thought it'd be cool to make a video explaining it. So hopefully this explained it for you. Or at least a little bit. Maybe there's something new you learned off of this. Very fancy, small, polished bits of metal that all do a great job of just wrapping thread around each other through cloth. Guys, that is it for today, but we've always got new great stuff for you to see. Hit that box down there to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a great video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.